Whatever rots your socks, whatever spins your top Whatever winds your watch, whatever flips your flop Whatever turns you on, whatever flies your flag Whatever bangs your gong or whatever swings your bag Do it often but do it well Cause nobody knows and there's no way to tell When the ride ends Good morning. <coughs> Welcome back to Turtle Beach. <laughs> Hell of an opening, huh? <laughs> There's no biz like showbiz. So yeah, hey, welcome back to Turtle Beach. How was your week? Great, great. Mine was terrific. Thank you for asking. All weeks are terrific on Turtle Beach. This week I was visited by uh, Deb and Sam from Australia. Very, very nice people. They spent two or three days here. Uh, while they were here, they offered me the keys to their condo up in Chiang Mai. They have just purchased and furnished a condo in a nice part of Chiang Mai. I don't, I don't know Chiang Mai, but they said it was a nice part of town. Uh, and they're going back to Australia for a few months and the condo will sit empty and unused. And they said, Steve, you know, we're paying for it. Might, someone might as well use it. Here, here's the keys. And without thinking, I said, no, thank you. No, thank you very much. But I, I, I have no desire to leave Turtle Beach at all. And there wasn't even a thought put into it. There wasn't any consideration given to my response. It was that fast. I just don't want to leave this place. I love this place. I think two or three days was probably just enough for Sam and, and, and Deb. But, uh, and for most people, most people come here in two or three days is enough. Uh, and I, uh, I, I met an old man, like me, an old man. Uh, man's 82 years old and uh, he came up to visit from Phuket. He lives on uh, Patong Beach, an American fella. He said, yeah, I bought a bar. I said, why Why would you buy a bar in Thailand? He said, well, I got bored. There's nothing to do. You need to have something to do. So I bought a bar. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I find tons to do here. And uh, even though Sam and Deb's offer was very, very kind, I didn't have to think about it a moment. I don't wanna leave. But thank you, Deb and Sam. I want to point out some housekeeping things. Then I'm going to read you a story. Props from uh, Expat Days, one of my books. Uh, these are first-person anecdotal essays uh, that were published in The Nation and Phuket Magazine and the Phuket Gazette and various in-flight magazines back in the 90s. And I've picked one for this week uh, because it's about how Falang used to come here and spend years and years here and we were respected and admired by the locals. But much, much of that was dependent on our behavior and, and this, you know, everything that's going on. Swiss guy in Trang attacks an old woman with a walker in the mall and a Swiss guy in Phuket attacks a doctor on the beach and a Russian woman kicks a pregnant Thai woman because she won't take off her shoes to come in the store. Uh, the, the, the shit's hitting the fan. Uh, we are losing a sense of civility in society across the board, but it is particularly noticeable here because this place was always famous for its civility, for its hospitality, for its sabai sabai. You know, for a hundred years, Thais have been patient with us and enduring our bad behavior, but our behavior is getting worse. And there are many, 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 many more of us here now. And ties are exposed to the outside world through social media. They're able to see that, that we know we're behaving badly, that we don't behave this way back home. And all of these things, uh, they're also getting to see, you know, this guy kicked this woman over and over and over and over and over and over again on social media. And uh, I think we're sort of entering a new age where the dynamic between a resident, expat, Falang, and our hosts 
is shifting. So I, I wrote a story 30 years ago about the funeral of a friend and, and how he was treated uh, after his last days here in, in Phuket uh, or here in Thailand. And I would like to read that to you, but before I do some housekeeping, I've added an FAQ, a frequently asked questions section to the uh, description of all these videos. There are a lot of questions that are asked over and over again. So I've written a paragraph to answer each question. Uh, before you ask a question, please go read the fact and see uh, what. Uh, <laughs> thank you for all your positive comments. Again, I, I can't, there's too many now for me to, to say thank you individually, but uh, I do appreciate them. I read everything. I read your comments. I read the replies to your comments, the replies to the replies and uh, try to keep the trolls out, or sometimes, hi Clive, <laughs> let them in. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much. I do appreciate your attention. I appreciate your comments. Uh, there's going to be, I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna try to use this channel the way other uh, vloggers do. Uh, a young woman from the government uh, reached out to me and said, Steve, can you help us promote a fun run in Ban Tong District here in, in Ampa Taimung, uh, coming up here on the 28th of April. And I said, well, you know, most of my viewers <laughs> live in America or Australia or Canada. They don't, they don't live in, in Bangtong district. But you know what? There's a few people local, uh, Benton and, and a few others who watch this. Uh, I think John Miller watches it religiously. I don't think he would ever admit to that, but I think he watches every week. And, uh, I'm going to see what I can do. If I can get one Falang to go to the organizers there, and there's a bunch of different runs. If they've got a, a website, uh, I'll put a link in the description to the website. Uh, there's walking and running and, and groups and things like that. It's a very local affair. If one Falang goes to the organizers and registers for a fun walk or something and says, yeah, I heard about this on Steve Ross's YouTube channel, uh, that will get back to me and I'll, I'll be tickled pink. I'll be, I'll be delighted. And somebody in the government will get a little feather in their cap because if you get a farang to come to your little local event like that, uh, that's a good deal. So yeah, if you're around Panga, if you're around Kaolak, if you're around Phuket on the 28th of April and you like to walk out in the, it's a very pretty piece of the countryside. It's out in the mountains. Uh, it's gorgeous and you'll be under trees for much of it. A April 28th, the Bang Tong uh, fun run. And uh, I'll, yeah, I'll link in the description. Yeah, these, uh, these stories I'm reading, uh, I, I just, I put a lot of effort into writing these 30 years ago and I think they still ring true. I think there's still parts of them that are very apropos. But I'm reading them because otherwise nobody will ever hear these stories. You know, nobody's reading again. There's a guy here in Thailand who uh, really, really, really wanted to be a writer. So 40 years ago, he came here, called himself a writer, started self-publishing books. We all laughed at him 40 years ago because, oh, it was so demeaning to have to publish your own books uh, and to do it out of vanity, out of pure vanity, because the guy can't write, can't write his way out of a wet paper bag, this guy. Uh, it, it, we laughed at him. Well, then he became, you know, the grand old man of letters of Thailand. Well, now, you know, not nobody's reading his books just like they're not reading my books. Nobody's reading. Nobody has the attention span. TikTok has, has trained us to be interested in something for 30 seconds, and that's it. We read headlines. We don't read articles. Uh, so that guy invested 40 years in building this reputation and, uh, you know, uh, he's, he, all of us, anybody who published between covers on paper, we're forgotten now. You know, who's reading A Woman of Bangkok? Terrific book, A Woman of Bangkok, the book that brought me to Thailand. Who's reading that now? Nobody. So, you know, uh, there's a bitter, bitter irony in that, of 40 years invested uh, with no profit at the end of it. But anyway, I'm gonna do what I can. <laughs> to bring my, my uh, uh, stories to a new audience. This one is fairly long. I think it's five or six pages. Most of what I wrote back in the day ended automatically at a thousand words. I was trained by Colin Pipperell 
to write exactly to a thousand words and most of my old stories, not 998, not 999, not 1001. They come out at 1000 words. And uh, <laughs> that fed right into my OCD. So this one's a little longer. This is probably from either Thailand Tatler or Phuket Magazine. They gave me more room. Uh, but at any rate, treat it like a podcast. Don't stare at my face while I'm reading. Uh, go do something, knit, crochet, uh, build a styrofoam turtle and cover it with uh, cigarette lighters. Uh, but listen, all right? This is called The French Connection, and it was uh, kind of written in the moment. <sighs> mid-90s, sometime in the mid-90s. Yesterday, some very important people came to Phuket to say goodbye to His Excellency Gerard André. And now forgive, forgive me for my, my French. I have no idea how to speak French. Officier de la Légion d'Honneur and Commandeur de la Ordre Nationale du Mérite, Chief of the French Delegation at the Helsinki Conference in 1975, former ambassador of the government of France to Finland and Thailand, and for the last 20 years, one of the best loved men on Phuket's Kata Beach. I first knew of Gerard André from his introduction to Old Phuket, a Siam Society publication and just about the only book about this island I've ever found. But over the years, we would meet at various functions me as part of the press and him as guest of honor. These sorts of things are so small on Phuket that I could have easily used them as opportunities to cultivate his friendship, except that he scared the hell out of me. Like any old man, he was spindly and frail, but he had these eyes that looked right through you and right down to the lint in the bottoms of your pockets. I'm sure he knew about that candy bar that I stole from Kresge supermarket when I was seven years old. Whenever we met, I would clasp his hand in a sweaty fist, stutter a greeting, and sidle away before I said something stupid or tripped over his cane. When Ambassador Andre retired to Phuket 20 years ago, Kata Beach was empty of anything except a local elementary school and some little fishermen's huts. He took a modest house on the bluff where Kun Saman, formerly major domo at the French embassy in Bangkok, would take care of Kun Andre for the next two decades. It was Kun Saman who greeted me when I came to Wat Kata on Tuesday to pay my respects but it was the waiters from the boathouse who were setting up the tents and the folding chairs, stringing the fluorescent lights and carrying the cases of Coke and Fanta. For the last decade, Ambassador Andre was a regular VIP guest at the boathouse, a little hotel and restaurant just down the hill from the ambassador's house. His palate and his nose made him a welcome advisor to the chef and the sommelier and his wit made him a welcome guest at any dinner party. But his venerable age and his generous spirit made him even more popular with the staff, especially the waiters, who served him at table several times each week. For the last few years, Kun Pinyo has worked the evening shifts so that he could spend most mornings helping Kun Saman with Ambassador Andre's breakfast. Kun U took him out to sample the new restaurants that spring up on Phuket like mosquitoes after a rain. Kun Chan, who used to be one of the best Thai boxers in Southern Thailand, carried his herbal oils up the hill and administered therapeutic massage to the old man's spindly frame almost every day. And for the last week, Kun Chan has been carrying a tray of coffee and cakes each noon to place before the coffin. Ambassador Andre <coughs> had been a player on the world stage before most of these guys were born. And they were only children when he came to Kata Beach. But in the end, it was Kun Chung Khon, a 28-year-old waiter from Chumpon, 
who nailed down the coffin lid. And thus, Kun Chong Kons were the last mortal eyes to ever look upon the face of Gerard André. I dropped into Wat Kata for the free lunch every day this week, and twice for the free dinner, and there were never many other mourners. Ambassador André was 83 years old. Most of his friends and family were either dead or busy brokering peace. And what with recent events in the capital, it wasn't a good week for the VIPs to leave Bangkok. Almost without exception, the people who kept him company during his last week in Kata wore the blue striped uniforms of the Boathouse Food and Beverage Department. Among the more than 50 wreaths that lined the pavilion were those from General Prem Tinsulunan. Tinsulanand. Tinsulanand. He was Prime Minister. I should be able to say that. General Prem. Everybody knows him as General Prem. Former Prime Minister Anand Panyare Kun, the man who signed the bill making my children Thai citizens, and her Royal, uh, His Royal Highness Prince Hendrik of Denmark. But it was the waiters from the boathouse who received the wreaths from the florists and hung them on the walls. Kun Pramot the Muslim sous chef at the boathouse did not come on the temple grounds, but stationed himself every day in the parking lot to guard the expensive cars parked there, give directions to foreign visitors, and chase the stray dogs away from the buffet tables. It was the boathouse waiters who fed the monks, washed the dishes, lit the incense, strung the blinking Christmas lights over the coffin, greeted the well-wishers, put the red bills in the white envelopes, and put their hands together and prayed for their old friend. Because I wasn't invited, I can't tell you what the cremation next Saturday will be like, but the invitation, written by somebody who didn't know Mr. Andre half as well as he would have liked us to believe, says that Mr. Andre will be carried to the furnace to the strains of a Gabriel Fare Requiem, which will, and here I quote, give a French atmosphere and the religious feeling for his last earthly journey. The actual cremation will take place in the evening and will be attended by the family and a limited number of close friends only. I don't know if the boathouse waiters will be included in that limited number. It's really immaterial since they were already responsible for an entire week of religious feeling in a decidedly Thai atmosphere, which was, after all, the atmosphere in which His Excellency chose to live what he knew would be the last decades of his life. Gerard André was a genuine war hero a man who walked the halls of power for three decades, a man of culture and letters and fine wines. But when his end came, it was the men, wow, I haven't thought about this guy in a long time. But when his end came, it was the men who raised their families on 9,000 baht per month, the men who carry the trays of dirty dishes and sweep the crumbs from the table, who laid him to rest and watched over his remains. They had long since claimed Gerard André as their own, and it was their incense that carried their prayers to their gods so that he may go to their heaven. Not the heaven of Lourdes or Chartres or Notre Dame, but the heaven of Cotta Beach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Steve, note to self, don't think about death at six in the morning. <laughs> Wherever. I'm on Turtle Beach, the heaven of Turtle Beach. Why would I think about death? All right, that's enough. Thank you, if you're still here, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate your attention. Like, subscribe, and please share. Apparently the uh, algorithm likes sharing. 
I'm an only child of a single parent. I don't share. Uh, nothing else to say, I guess. I do appreciate your attention. This is the best time of my week, man. I really, really like this. I'll tack, I'll go through my phone and see what else is in there and I'll tack some other stuff on the end of this. Stick around for that. I owe you a couple jokes because I forgot last week. Uh, I'll go out on the motorcycle and find a concrete uh, turtle and uh, tell you a couple of jokes. Uh, otherwise, have a terrific week and uh, take care of yourself and I will see you here exactly seven days from now. Goodbye. So we'll take a walk around the studio. At the end of the week, to gauge the week's progress, this is going to be the plinth. For the next turtle I'm building, the next turtle will go outside the uh, knit noise store where I buy my cigarettes. I'm going to break it up this time and use uh, bottle caps with lighters and see what that looks like. Making it in two parts, tore the whole top of the thing off. I wasn't happy with it. It was ugly. It's, it's you know, the, the constant struggle is, is making organic curved shapes out of rigid rectangular mass produced uh, items. <clears throat> but got a whole lot. All of these are off the beach, of course. This is the next project. I'm gonna make a stop sign. I just have tons and tons of white and red uh, bottle caps, Coke. Red is Coke and they're very, 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 very common. So I'm gonna make a stop sign. I had Chum Nan cut me a piece of wood in an octagon and uh, it's gonna say, Yoot, stop. Get it? Beach trash, stop. Yeah, well, at any rate, it's just something to do with white and red caps because I've got uh, kind of a lot of white and red caps. Anyway, yeah, that's what's happening. Uh, Bob the turtle is growing by leaps and bounds. Look at the size of him now. He's, he's doubled in size since the new year. I bought him at the new year festival. I got to get a, a real tank. I got to get someone to drive me to Phuket so I can get a real aquarium for him. Anyway, that's the studio. That's Boontong Studios today. And that's Boontongs. Go look at a Boontongs video. People are coming in here saying, Steve, I watch your channel every week. What's that? Why you have a dollhouse with sand on the floor? That's Boontongs. It's a playlist. Go look it up. Watch a couple Boontongs videos. I'm very proud of them. And uh, I wish people would look at them. Anyway, that's all she wrote. So I owe you some jokes by a turtle. I have set the precedent and uh, I, I, I have to keep it up. So this is one of the turtles that came for the turtle festival. Uh, and uh, it's a very popular selfie site, including this morning. But we're going to forge ahead. Let's see. Ah, uh, oh, how about this one? Knock, knock. Who's there? To. To who? Actually, it's to whom? <laughs> the pedant's delight. Ah, uh, let's see. Oh, my girlfriend, my first girlfriend was an apostrophe. It didn't work out. She was too possessive. How many writers does it take to change a light bulb? Just two. One to change the light bulb almost all the way and the second to add a funny twist at the end. All right, that's it. Have a great week. Signing out from Turtle Beach. Whatever shaves your sheep, whatever bakes your glam, whatever digs your peak, whatever smokes your ham, whatever blows your nose, whatever chews your bone, whatever squirts your hose, whatever sings your song, do it after but do it well. Nobody knows and there's no way to tell. When you ride and this shit you be getting down to me, you be ever blue y'all do the neck. Shoot it, shoot it, shoot it up, shoot down to that dando.